all right guys so continuing from yesterday's lesson as we were doing our liquidity we now need to do the solvency and the gearing then we are going to be doing formulas for companies that is grade 12 work now what is the solvency ratio solvency we want to know if the total assets that we have would be able to cover the total liabilities that we have as a business so the formula for our <clears throat> solvency is going to be is my marker yay oh it's here so the formula for solvency will be total assets is to total liabilities <clears throat> that is our solvency so we'll be adding all of our assets once we find the answer for our assets we're gonna be putting it here then we're gonna be adding all of our liabilities once we find the answer we'll be putting it here and this divided by this will give us a answer let's say here was 100 and here was 50 we're gonna be saying 100 divided by 50 which is going to be giving us two ne? our answer will be equated to one so it's gonna be two is to one that means for every one for every one liability we have two assets okay that is a good position to be in is it i think so but <clears throat> we don't want our total assets to be less than our total liabilities we don't want this here but at the same time we don't want to have three is to one ideally if this is close to one is to one or one comma five is to one that's a good position our total assets will be able to cover all of our total liabilities as explained in the other video of liquidity we don't want this to be five is to one to be ten is to one because of the reason that we stated in our current ratio and plus more for this one because it's total assets but ideally one is to one one comma five is to one that's a good position to be in liquidity uh, solvency wise okay so yeah <clears throat> that is it. then we'll be having our debt equity ratio as you can see the word debt equity you can okay so here we have debts and here we have equity debts when when we are saying debts in this case we are referring to our non-current liability or our loan so debt is our loan equity if you're in grade 12 it's shareholders equity if you're in grade 10 it's partners equity so here the formula for here will be non current liability because in non current liability is where we find the loan so it's going to be non current liability is to shareholders equity if you are in grade 12 if you are in grade 11 it's going to be partners equity <clears throat> as we've been doing you take the amount for the non current liability if it's 1 million and here if it is 500,000 maybe let's just make this one more so here if it is 2 million so we're gonna be saying 1 million divided by 2 million in this case our answer is gonna be 0 comma 5 after getting your answer your answer will be is 2 1 at all times so when we look at it like this excuse my mess here the 0 comma 5 is on the side of debt and the one is on the side of the equity so for every one equity what we own we have 0 comma 5 of what we owe so i think this needs space more space i'm gonna rub it off so non-current liability is to shareholders equity this one here we said is 0 comma 5 and this one is one which parts do we want to be bigger obviously you want the shareholders equity to be bigger than the liability as is the case here 
shareholders equity is what we own liability is what we owe obviously you want what we own to be bigger than what we owe okay but <clears throat> it's not a bad thing to have liabilities it's not a bad thing to have liabilities as long as our liabilities are not too much so when you are calculating this ratio debt equity ratio we want this ratio to be less than 0 0.5 0 0.5 is still okay but we want it to be less than 0 0.5 ideally if it is around 0 0.3 is one that is a good position because it means only 30 percent of what we own is what we owe See, that only 30 percent was in this nazo in this case but once this ratio is at 0 0.7 is one it means that we owe sequelator 70 percent for everything that we own imagine being in that position so we want this ratio to be 0 0.5 and below of course we don't want it to be zero is one because we do know the importance of having loans okay so that is it for our debt equity ratio <clears throat> If the company is 0, 0.3 is 1, it is lowly geared. So we do not owe more than what we can afford or more than the levels that are good. But if it's 0, 0.7, <clears throat> if it's 0, 0.5 and above, then the company is now highly geared and we shouldn't be taking any more loans. But in this case, we can still continue until we are at maybe 0, 0.5, okay? So you always want our company to be lowly geared because we do not want to depend too much on loans. Okay, so that is it for <clears throat> our solvency and our gearing. Then the formulas for companies now, that is great solve. Formulas for companies, we have Erosha here. <clears throat> the word Russia means return on shareholders equity from the amount that we have or we have received from shareholders through investing what is the return that the shareholders will be getting so this will be in percentage you see the word return means our answer will be in percentage form so the formula for this is going to be in net profit after tax all so we return will be meaning net profit after tax in this case all over share or any average share holders equity then after putting all of this times 100 because we want our answer to be in a percentage form now what do they mean by average shareholders equity starts with the word average as we said yesterday average means that we take this year plus so we're gonna be taking shareholders equity at this year plus the shareholders equity yeah last year after getting the answer for this, we will divide our answer by two. That is how we will be getting average shareholders equity. If last year was 100 and this year is 150, we're going to say 100 plus 150, which is 250. Then we'll be dividing it by two. And that is how we'll be getting our average. So it's going to be what? 125. That is our average shoulders equity. Net profit after tax. We've done a lot of work regarding it. So I don't want this to be a problem. Then after getting, after substituting this and this, we times the answer by 100 because we want to see what's on average, how much percentage is going to be received by our shareholders. Okay. That is return on shoulders equity or return on the money that the shareholders have invested 
All right, that is Ishaolas. Because then there's this one here, here. <clears throat> inev. Let's look at the word inev. What does the word inev mean? So the word nev basically means net asset value. Net asset value. Just to simplify, what does that mean? Basically, in nev is the value of one share. The ve so the answer that we will be getting here means that our share, each share, is worth this amount according to the business. So, how do we get this? Gonna be saying shareholders equity. Shareholders equity. All over number of shares issued. Well, I don't have space. Then times 100. Now, here, the answer won't be in percentage because we are looking for a value of one share. So the answer you'll be getting here, if it's 100, it's going to be 100 cents. Okay? The answer will be in cents form. So that means that each share is worth 100 cents. That is one rand. Okay? That is basically inev. Of course, there's inev, there's a market price, the price that the customers or the market believe our share is worth and then there's the issue price the price that we actually sold our shares for but for now there is inev then we have dps <clears throat> dps basically means dividends per share remember we have two types of dividends we have interim which is the dividends that are paid plus the final which is the dividends that are declared that is our formula. We're going to be putting interim dividends plus final dividends all over number of shares issued. Run it space here. And then again times 100. Interim dividend plus final dividends all over number of shares issued times 100. We want to know what per share. How many dividends are given out or how much dividends are given out per share? Our answer again here will be in cents form. So if you get 30, it means that our dividends per share is 80 cents per each share. Per each share that shareholders own, we will be giving out 30 cents as dividends. Then we have... EPS, which is earnings per share. Earnings. <clears throat> so the word earnings in this case represents the money that we'll be getting, which is net profit after tax, all over per share number of shares issued. Again, we want our answer to be in cents. We're going to be timesing all of this by 100. How much does each share earn us? That is the answer we are looking for. Because we want to know, from the shares that we give out, how much is that share earning us? That is EPS. Then there's one final ratio that we'll be doing as we send our question paper tomorrow. But for now, let us all know all of this plus yesterday's work. Plus the profitability ratios, then we are all set for winning. Okay. So, yeah. <clears throat> so with that knowledge, again, I want you to keep a close eye on this page, YouTube channel, because I'm be posting every day and. Tomorrow's work will always be related to yesterday's work, like how we do in the classroom, because this is our class. So if you've missed yesterday's video, make sure that you watch yesterday's video. If you've missed two, uh, the video that was posted two, two days ago, you should go and watch it, because tomorrow we'll be doing a paper. Well, I might even do it now and post it now, because why not? I work hard, I work ethic, I don't get tired. Yet students who are in grade 12, grade 11, grade 10, 17 years are always getting tired. Kanjan can be 
getting tired when you are 17. You are telling me, hey, you get tired. You always feel like sleeping. No, no, no. It's the food that you eat. It's the things that you do. It's the things that you watch. The things that you listen to that are making you tired. I mean, I don't get tired. I do get tired. I'm a person. But, hey, some people, it's a pandemic. Oh, you wake up tired. You sleep tired. And when are you going to be functioning as a human being? It's the things that you listen to, the things that you watch, and the things that you eat. So, I mean, if you're an accounting student, my accounting student, you should be eating healthy for your brain, for your memory, and just for your overall health. No, after having the whole, I was working today, the whole day. I went to the gym. I read my books. Which one day? There's my book I was reading. I did a lot of things. Then I came back here. Now so fun. Yes, I'm teaching now. I had an online class. Then I'm teaching, doing these videos. Yet I'm not tired. I'm not tired. I came from work. I just washed my face. And I'm functioning. And I'll still be functioning. Now yet you guys, 17 year old. 16 years, 18 years, 19, you're always tired. You're always tired. You wake up tired. Hi. That is not how you live life. And you are not tired because you're a tired person. You are tired because of the things that you consume. I'm just going to leave it here. Hi. Bye-bye. This is Mr. Gumedi, your BFF Twitter.